When you're building out Data Studio reports and dashboards, knowing how to format your pages and charts is really only part of the problem. You also need to know what metrics to use and which story to tell so that you have the right data to drive action. I'm Amy Hebden with Paid Search Magic, and this video is about the thought process behind what data to share, as well as how to format it in Data Studio. Now, this video is inspired by an email newsletter sent by Avinash Kaushik called Die Row as a Die. And if you are not on Avinash's newsletter, I highly recommend subscribing, and I've included the link to, just to subscribe to his newsletter in the description box below this video. And the reason that I'm borrowing his example is because one is I think he raises a lot of really great points in, in terms of what to consider for which metrics we're using, and also how to think about some of those metrics and the impact and the consequences that it has to show these metrics to decision makers. So we're starting off with um, you know, just using, using the data in his example, we're starting off with publishers, marketing costs, and revenue. And to be clear, publishers really could be any dimension. This could be your campaigns, your ad groups, your keywords. It really could be anything. You're still gonna look at this the same way, just we're, we're using publishers as an example. And we have the marketing cost and revenues. So we've already got three columns, um, six rows of data. It's, it's kind of a lot to take in and it's not really clear what we would would want to do next. So the next logical the next logical decision we're going to make is to add a row as column which is I've already got pre-calculated for you. Um, so let's just go ahead and add that in here. So when we start to look at the ROAS, immediately a few things stand out, right? Um, the thing I like about ROAS is that it shows the relationship between cost and revenue. Um, ROAS is calculated by revenue divided by ad spend. Um, so we can see, um, looking at MySpace, we've got a two to one ROAS. Uh, looking at Alta Vista, we have almost a seven to one ROAS. Um, and this is where Avinash makes a point that ROAS is a little bit too clean and easy. And so we miss some of the subtleties that are behind that number that are that are affecting the performance of, of the campaigns or, or any of the data we're looking at. I'm just going to read to you. Um, what he has said about this because I think it's really well put. He said, another element is subtle but important. ROAS suboptimally equalizes attention on big and small spends. And I think that's really important. And if you particularly are running paid search campaigns, I imagine you've experienced this too, where we're looking at this number and it's a seven and it, you know it's so much better than everything else, but really the spend is so insignificant that it becomes almost, I mean, the impact is almost meaningless, but the ROAS is so high that we start to focus on, on this publisher or this dimension when really that's not where our attention should be. Um, so it's important to not end with ROAS. Now the calculation that Avinash recommends adding to help tell more of the story here is cost per sale. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag that in here. I have it built out in Google Sheets. I'm just dragging it in to make this a little bit cleaner. Um, I thought I had removed my heat maps from this, but I didn't. So we've got cost per sale here. And that starts to tell us a different story where we've got, um, you know, MySpace and NBC Prime have a much higher cost per sale. And so this can start to inform the conversation that we're having because we're not just looking at this high ROAS or whatever the ROAS is, we're also looking at the cost of acquiring that sale. So it starts to become a more meaningful conversation that can drive better action. Now, interestingly for NBC Prime, the ROAS is 0 0.3. Um, which means that we're essentially losing money, right? Um, with a high cost per sale and a really low ROAS, this is definitely something to be concerned about. Now, when we're doing paid search marketing, we typically don't have insight into cost of goods sold. We typically don't have insight into um, returns and other information that could be really meaningful to figure out the true profit. Um, we're usually just limited to revenue. And I mean, within that context, what we have to look at with revenue, we, we do what we can to be able to tell as meaningful story as we can without being able to tell like, you know, which, what shipping costs were what, um, we're just typically looking at revenue costs and things that are kind of like above that line. But if we were to stop here, we also would not get a very complete picture because now we're just looking at what it costs to drive the sale without, we're not looking at the relationship between the cost of 
driving that sale and also the revenue from that sale. So um, what I have done is I calculated the actual sales that were driven. If we take the cost per sale and the marketing cost, we can figure out the sales. And so we'll go ahead and include that. And we can see um, just how many sales happened. I don't know why it's a decimal, but it is. And so uh, maybe we can, people can buy, you know, a, a partial order. Um, but when we have that sales information, we can actually calculate something else out, which is average, uh, the value per order, because we know how many orders happened. And so when we add in the average order value, we can see something else happening here, which is that MySpace is like, almost seven times higher um, than any other than any other publisher in terms of the average order value. So without knowing what is happening over on MySpace, we can see that there's a lot of value in that, that people are either spending a lot more money or buying, uh, buying more expensive products, like something else is happening there. It's, we can't just look at the sales, um, like, excuse me, the cost per sale in a vacuum either, because that's discounting the value Per sale, so it might cost three thousand dollars to drive a sale, but that sale is worth sixty five hundred dollars. That really is standing out here. So we could keep on doing this. We can keep on adding metrics to our table. At some point, going to be pretty meaningless for our um, for our decision makers or our clients or our leadership team to look at a huge table full of lots of different metrics. And we can heat map it, we can do whatever we want, but at a certain point, it becomes too much to be able to digest. And so we're gonna have to go through and make decisions about what information not to include so that we get the best story possible. So in this case, I think it's pretty clear, like the number of sales, I mean, I'll just go ahead and make expand this out so it's a little bit easier to, to make that decision. Let me move this over here. Um, I mean, we can see that Washington Post drove the most sales, but the, it's kind of the average, the same average order value. Um, quick, quick tip here. I'm going to go to uh, resize columns, fit to data, so that I've got all my data nice and clean there. Um, but so we can start making those decisions on what information we want to include in the table. So probably we're going to want to limit the metrics somehow. So we might say, you know what, ROAS isn't important in this case. Uh, we might say sales isn't important in this case. But we can start to make decisions based on that information. There's no one metric that's the holy grail metric that's going to, um, I mean, un unless there's just one single KPI that the business only wants to focus on. But even that's going to be manipulated, right? We want to see what factors are driving that number to be what it is. So we can go in and we can start to remove uh, columns that aren't really helping to tell that story. And we can um, add columns that help to clarify like what's going on behind that data. But ultimately, we're thinking through our dashboards to say, what is the story here? What do we need um, our, our clients or our decision makers to be able to understand? What do we need them to, to learn? And how is this going to influence the decision? Like, what should the next step be? Do we need to fund more uh, certain publishers or, you know, certain campaigns? Do we need to put more money behind it? Do we need to optimize for efficiency? Do we need to pull back? Do we need to redistribute? There's a lot of information just from this, um, from this example that I don't have in data about. I don't know if if there's a, a minimum contract that needs to be signed or if there's, you know, an overall budget that's distributed or if there's just how how anything is assigned. But having that information is going to help tell that story to drive action. Um, I'm going to have a follow up video where I go through how to um, how to get some of this information. You know, I know I was just kind of dragging the fields in here, but I'm gonna show you how you can calculate this information, how you can get information from Google Sheets into your data studio report. But I did just wanna walk through this idea of how do we think through which, um, which metrics and which dimensions we're even looking at in a table in order to present the right information for our clients. Because it's not, it's not just about using a plug and play dashboard. It's about really being able to tell a story with data, which means that we're, choosing carefully those metrics that are appropriate for the business to help them understand what action to take next. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up um, and please leave any comments or requests for more videos. Uh, 
below in the comments section and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials on how to use Data Studio to improve your dashboards and reports. Thanks a lot.